Hello everybody. So um, I'm just going to quickly go over this. I think that England's test team, um, I don't think they failed so much as they've been picking the wrong team. So I'm going to try to pick the team myself. And I'm going to pick them in an order of most obvious picks to least obvious. So I'm going to start with number one, uh, Joe Root. He's best player captain, don't care about the captaincy bit. Um, and he's scored more runs in a, in a calendar year than any other English player ever. I think it was second or third overall, over a thousand runs. Amazing. Um, not even a question, he's number one. Number two is Ben Stokes. Now, potentially Ben Stokes could take over the captaincy. I think he's got a bit more leadership potential than Root. Root's a bit too shy. But definitely having Stokes in the side. I know as an all-rounder his stats aren't the best in the world, but by English standards they're pretty good. They're up there with the likes of Botham and Flintoff. And that's pretty good. Um, now, number three and four, I'm picking as uh, James Anderson and Stuart Broad. I don't understand the whole notion of dropping Broad or leaving both of them out of the first test. Seems stupid to me. So they're in my side, three and four. Number five is Ollie Robinson. Now, arguably, Ollie Robinson is England's best bowler on form. Um, I think he needs to have the benefit of um, Broad and Anderson in order to succeed to his best level, but he's definitely in the side for me, number five. Now, after that, let's, let's look at the batting. So, um, the second highest run scorer in the past 12 months for England was Rory Burns, and I know he has struggled against Australia. I'm still picking him. I'm not going to say, oh, he's had one test of bad form. I'm going to drop him. I know they did drop him, but I think that was a bit stupid. So he's my number six. Um, then I've got, I'm going to pick Darwood Milan. Now, uh, I know Milan actually isn't in best form, but he's been doing well against Australia, so I think we'll persist with him. He's, he's not the safest bet for me, but I'm picking him. Then I'm going to pick England, two of England's really, really strong batsmen uh, in Joss Butler and Johnny Bairstow. And they both keep wicket. I'm not... I'm not guaranteeing which one of them keeps wicket. I know Butler has struggled with the keeping part, but his batting's fine. So he's still definitely in my side. So they're eight and nine. And you go, okay, um, you're picking, Bearstay wasn't even in the side for the first two tests. He should have been, that was just stupid. Um, now then we have the question of, we got, we got now the other opening spot, or another batsman, and we've got the bowler, or. Are we going to play a fourth bowler? Is he going to play a fourth pacer? Possibly could be Mark Wood. We're playing at Sydney. Um, I'd probably go in with a spinner. Now, I don't think we can pick Jack Leach. I think his form's a bit too bad. So we look at another spinner, and I know that there aren't that many options, but I'm going to just go for one. I think it's called Dom Bess. Now, he's playing for me. Uh, I don't care about his form. with just a spinner for the sake of the spinner. He might stuff up. But you need that spinning option, and. You can't persist with Leach right now, so he's my number 10. Um, and, and again, I'm considering this to be a fringe player. Uh, I, I really probably consider uh, Darwin Milan to be a fringe player too. And I probably should have put him at number 9 actually, because I think that Butler and Bairstow are ahead of him for me. Um, even though in, in this test series Milan's done better, I don't think overall he is as solid. Uh, and then the last one is my opener. Now, I've got Rory Burns in there already. I don't think he should have been dropped. I know Australia is doing well against him, but that's just a one test. So come on, have a bit of faith in your second best batsman. Um, for the last 12 months, that's stupid to drop your second best batsman. How, how insane is that? And I don't think Zach Crawley is in very good form, nor is Hasid Hamid, how, however you say his name. Um, and I don't think either of them really warrant a spot in the side. Now, the question then is who does? Now, I think that it might be worthwhile going in with a makeshift opener. So I've seen that Joss Butler certainly opens for England in T20s and I think he's got a point to prove after a few stuff ups with the gloves. So I'm going to move him into open. I'm going to say to him, all right Butler mate, um, you're a little bit we know you're a great player, but you're a little bit on edge. We're considering dropping you. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a chance as an opener. Not as a wicket keeper, not as an opener and wicket keeper, just as an opener. And now that then says, okay, now we're looking for a wicket keeper or a batsman. Are we going to play Johnny Bairstow as a wicket keeper and go in with Ollie Pope? 
as the batsman. Um, because Pope has been in good form before, that's one option. Or are we going to go in with a specialist wicket keeper and pick Ben Folkes and then play Bairstow as a batsman and therefore have three wicket keepers inside? I think that's the best option. I think that considering England have struggled because of missed chances with the bad wicket keeping of Butler, I think that it is worthwhile giving Ben Folkes a chance. So he would be my wicket keeper just ahead of Ollie Pope, and now that is a tough decision to make. Um, and I think you could argue of going in with Pope instead. But otherwise that's done. See, see that's not, it's not a hard team to pick. So I think that, yeah, the spinner is a tough one and whether to go with Folks or Pope is a, is a tough one. But otherwise it's pretty easy. And I don't see why they're struggling so much with this. You've got Roy Burns opening with Joss Butler. I think that's a great combination to start yourself off with. You've got Darwin Milan coming in. Okay, not the best number three, but he's doing all right at the moment. Then you have uh, Joe Root at number four, that's your solid number four. You have Johnny Bairstow at five, really solid batsman. Um, then you have ben, ben Stokes at six, he can be good sometimes. Um, you have Ben Folks as your um, wicket keeper at number seven and look, his batting's pretty good too. Then you have Stuart Broad, um, Jimmy Anderson and Ollie Robinson as your three pronged, really strong pace attack. And then you have Dom Bess as your spinner and look, you might, you might have had Jack Leach. I don't think you can justify Jack Leach at the moment, but you certainly also can't go full pace, not at Sydney. So I don't want to play Mark Wood. But look, th so there's really only two, two players out of that that they should be umming and ahhing about, and that's whether it's Folks versus Pope and whether it's Bess versus Leach or versus Wood. That's it. Nobody else. It should be even in any question at the moment. Um, and that's, that's the, the, the problem with the selectors, is that they're dropping players that shouldn't be in contention for being dropped. And they're picking players that shouldn't be in the ballpark. Um, and this is the crazy bit about it. They're, that's where the selecting is really off kilter. I mean, I know in Australia we've got, we're picking um, Marcus Harris, who shouldn't be in the side. And we had that strange pick of Scott Boland, and then he got six for seven. Um, but. The selection, you see the selection issues in Australia, no winner is big. And I think in a lot of ways that's the gap in the side. Um, Australia is pretty settled, even though we've got a few that we're making a bit of a mistake with or hunching or whatever. England's all over the place. And that's the difference. England need to have that reliable test team have, where you have nine that are pretty much automatic picks. And then you have two you're not sure about. That's what you want. And you, yeah, you're putting pressure on Josh Butler. You're saying to him, Butler, mate, You've got to perform. We've given you a chance as an opener, otherwise, goodbye. And we'll play Crawley or, or Pope, perhaps. And you've got to say, Ben, folks, we're giving you a chance as a keeper. See how you go. Can you be England's best wicket keeper? And, and you say to Dom Best, and you say, mate, we're not sure that you're our best spinner, but we're giving you a shot because, we, because of uh, Leach's issues. Can you do it? Can you, lift, can you rise to the challenge? And you give them these challenges, and I think that's important to do. Not for every player, some players, They've earned to not have to be challenged. But that's what you've got to do. And even if England lost with that side, I'd be happy that at least they picked the right side. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye-bye.